Thanks for logging on to Christ Notes. Today we're going to continue our study about how our Father has mercy on all of us. Going back to the guest. Who are the guests in heaven? Remember at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the parable that we read where Jesus was talking about eternity? And he said that the room was filled with guests, both good and bad. And yesterday how we studied that our Father will have mercy on us all alike. But we're going to continue that train of thought today when it comes to judging. Because what most people think about Judgment Day is that we, the body of Christ, are going to be judged. But the beauty thing is, the, the, the great thing is, is that we are actually going to be judging on Judgment Day. We're not going to be judged because a thousand years earlier, when Jesus returned to the earth, the Bible says that we were transformed to be just like him. Think about it. We're Jesus' body. We're flesh of his flesh. We're bone of his bone. We're as he is, even though we're still in this world. So if we would be judged on Judgment Day, wouldn't that mean that Jesus had to be judged on Judgment Day? We're one with him. We're new creatures in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. The Bible says that we're dead and our lives are hidden in Christ with God. So we actually are going to be judging on Judgment Day. Look at Revelation 20, verse 4. This is John, and he says, Then I saw the thrones... And sitting on them were those to whom authority to act as judges and to pass sentence was entrusted. If we look in um, 1 Corinthians 6, 2, this is Paul talking. He says, do you not know that the saints, the believers, will one day judge and govern the world? And if the world itself is to be judged and ruled by you, are you unworthy and competent to try such petty matters of the smallest courts of justice? So they were fighting in Corinth. And, and Paul writes to them, don't you guys understand one day you're going to be the judges? John saw the thrones of those who were entrusted to be judges. Now, John 5.22, it says, Even the Father judges no one, for he has given all judgment the last judgment, and the whole business of judging entirely into the hands of the Son. So Jesus alone judges. Whose body are we? We're Jesus' body. We're one with Jesus. So the beautiful thing is we will judge on Judgment Day because the Father has given all judgment over to Jesus and we're his body. The Bible also tells us that we have passed from judgment. We're unto life. We've died to all the rules and laws. This Bible repeatedly tells us that, that there are no longer any laws to which con to convict us with. They've all been nailed to the cross with Jesus. He made a show of them openly, and he triumphed over them. So I want you to think about how you will judge on Judgment Day. And this is getting back to the mercy. You did absolutely nothing to become a child of God. You were chosen before the foundation of the world by our Father. His free will chose you. You are only a bride of Christ because of grace. So as you're sitting there judging, how would you ever find anybody guilty when you are sitting there based on nothing you did? That's the beauty of judgment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of us judging on Judgment Day. And that's the beauty of the room filled with guests, both good and bad. Because there's only one unforgivable sin. It's called blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And you know what's really powerful to me? The Bible never really tells us what that sin is. Don't you think if there was one sin that we could commit, that our Father would clearly spell it out repeatedly, especially because he says, come to me as little children? When my children were little, if something was dangerous, there wasn't a question mark about what it was. They knew exactly what that danger was. I marked it and I protected them from it. They clearly knew what the danger was. I never left it up to guesswork. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is never clearly defined in the Bible. So it's the only unforgivable sin, and we really don't know what that sin is. People guess as to what it is, but have somebody actually open up the Scriptures and tell you specifically what that sin is, and you won't be able to find it. So they guess at it. So if there's no real... That's the only unforgivable sin, and we really don't know what that is... Think of how you will judge on Judgment Day. Mercy is going to abound, and the room will be filled with guests. And there will be guests that really did live good lives, and there will be guests that who didn't. And the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. But you know the beautiful thing is? 
even the last are going to be there. And like we read in Corinthians, it says that all their works will be tested by fire. And even if those works are burned up, they will be saved, even as one who passed through fire. So that's the beauty of our eternity. That's the victory of Jesus. The one man's sacrifice has brought righteousness and right standing with God to all of us. Some of us is the bride of Christ. Some of us is his guest. But amen. All get to be there. I hope this helps you. Thanks for logging on. And you can't help but be blessed today in the power of our Father's might.